Now, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, it reads, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. And so that's where the, the term wolves in sheep's clothing. You see what I'm saying? Meaning that they look like a true born again Christian, a nice guy and all that. But on the inside, they're wolves. They're trying to attack you. They're trying to destroy you. You see what I'm saying? They're trying to steal from you. Okay? Because remember, the, the enemy, the thief comes in, Satan comes in to steal, kill, and to destroy. He's trying to steal from you. Okay? So now, with that being said... I want to go to 1 Timothy because now this doctrine of, oh, you sow your seed and God will give you a harvest and all this kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? See, these people are making merchandise of it, out of you. You see what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let's, let's first hit uh, Peter. Let's go to 2 Peter and we'll uh, hit verse, chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Okay, it says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. All right? Who shall uh, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Okay, so they start denying the sacrifice that the Lord paid for them. You see what I'm saying? All right. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. All right. So they'll start talking against Christ. You see what I'm saying? But anyway, it says, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. And what's covetousness? It's your wanting, your desire to have, to have more. You see what I'm saying? And through that, that wanting and desire shall they with feigned words, made up words, you know, make merchandise of you. Okay? So that's what they're going to do. I and mean, you can see that happening every day. Just turn it on channel. I ain't going to say the channel, but just turn it on any of these, uh, you know, so-called Christian networks and you'll see how they're, how they're making merchandise of the flock okay and it says anyway uh and now and he says and uh, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not okay so now let's go to first timothy chapter 6 verse 3 and 12 and we'll break this down see a lot of people don't never want to get into the whole chapter you know basically what what paul was telling them telling him you've heard this one verse but i'm going to read i'm going to go up further than that so let's go to first timothy chapter 6 verses 3 to 12 First Timothy chapter 6 verse 3. Now remember, these false preachers like coming in teaching bad doctrine. They teach you things that's not true. Alright, so now let's read this. Okay, verse 3 it says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. So that means they lack the truth. All right. Supposing that gain is godliness. You see what I'm saying? A lot of these people are teaching this prosperity thing. I don't have no problem with you believing that God will prosper his servants because that's true. However, all this stuff about being rich, being millionaires and billionaires and running and, and everything. You know what I mean? Please, you see what I'm saying? That's not what it says. You supposing that gain is godliness. You think just because you got, you know, a couple million dollars and you just keeping it all to yourself that that's godly? You see what I mean? There ain't nothing godly in that. <laughs> and it says, from such withdraw thyself. That's what the word says. Withdraw yourself from these people that teaching that gain is godliness. You see what I'm saying? But godliness with contentment is great gain. They're supposed to be teaching to be content. You got to learn to be content in whatsoever state that you're in. You see what I'm saying? Whether you don't have much or whether you have abundance. You see what I'm saying? You got to learn to be content. All right. Then it says, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. All right. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. That's what's supposed to be taught. You see what I'm saying? But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in the destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. You see what I'm saying? They're coveting money. These people will make merchandise out of you because they want your money. Period. You see what I'm saying? And they're doing that to Christians. And you don't do that. You don't defraud God's children and don't think that it's not going to come back on you. You see what I'm saying? See, they didn't have their time in the sun, but now that the truth is coming up, now they're being exposed and now they're going to have to start changing it. Oh, well, you don't have to tithe to be righteous. You don't have to do that. You see what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And now when it starts, well, you don't got to give, you know what I'm saying, to, to them. 
You see what I mean? Now they're going to be exposed and people are going to start turning them off. And then now you're going to see they're going to get more desperate. And that's why right now, because of this recession, you're starting to see these guys saying, Oh, you don't stop your giving. You don't stop your giving. You don't stop your giving. You see what I'm saying? Because they are afraid that if people stop giving, then they're going to go, they're going to go bankrupt. You see what I'm saying? And that's, that's, and that's fear in them, not fear in people. So you got to watch who you're sitting under. Okay? All right. So anyway, it says... Uh, well, well, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. You see what I'm saying? So you see, the love of money is the root of all evil. But they don't teach you that he's telling, talking to you about false teachers. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's the first thing they're going to try to get you on because they know what you want. They know that, you know what I mean, if you're barely struggling to make it to your bills, oh, well, shoot, I know these people are going to need a miracle blessing. Oh, just give me your money and God is going to ring. Well, guess what? Then why are you always telling me that I need that I need to uh, to give you money without my support? You can't, you can't pay your bills. You see what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Why don't you just trust God? Don't tell me to trust God and give you all my money. You give your money to me. I'm the poor one. <laughs> you give your money to me and you trust God that he's going to pay your television bills. That's what you do. You see what I'm saying? So you got to watch these people. Now, you know, and they sit up here and, and they tell on themselves out the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Okay? All right. So, you know what I mean? And we're going to pick this thing up because now, you know what I mean, I'm going to have to get into the whole tithe issue. Okay? And that's going to be the next one. It's going to be the truth about tithing. And I know some people are going to get offended, but it's the truth. And until you know the truth, you can't be set free. You see what I'm saying? All right? So with that being said, let's bring this into closing. Let's go to 1 John, and we're going to read verses 1 all the way down to verse 11, okay? And it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, okay? So he said, you don't believe everything that just comes to you. You try that spirit, because many false prophets are gone out into the world, all right? Hereby know you the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, okay? So if you hear a man that's saying, well, you don't, they don't believe in Jesus, you already know. You don't. You already off my list. I ain't listening to you. All right. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Okay? So it's all about Jesus. You see what I'm saying? All right. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So now he's talking about, you know, another way you got to love. You see what I'm saying? If I'm sitting here taking all your money and not teaching you the truth, is that love? You see what I'm saying? He said, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested the love of God toward, toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. You see what I mean? Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. So remember, anybody teaching you that you got to work for your salvation, telling you, you if you don't tithe that you're cursed, that's a lot. You see what I'm saying? And I'm going to cover that in the next video. You see what I'm saying? But anyway, you know what I mean? It says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Okay? So you got to understand. You got to test these people. If they're talking against Jesus, you already know. Uh-uh. You see what I'm saying? But if they're talking against, you know, his, his sacrifice that completely cleanses you from sin, you see what I'm saying? Then you know not to follow that person either. You see what I'm saying? Because they don't understand. They themselves have not fully accepted that Jesus has paid their sin debt in full. All right? And you better not follow a person like that. Okay? So, with that being said, I thank you for your time. Once again, God bless you. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Until we meet again, thank you.